Hi. Yes, it's New Year's Day, and yes, I'm at work. Ah, oh, go figure. Anyway, um, I thought I'd do a uh, quick follow-up and have some more play around with this Tektronix TDS3054 oscilloscope. If you haven't seen the previous video, I'll link it in down below. Didn't really have any time to uh, troubleshoot it uh, properly last time. It was just a tear down to see if there was anything obvious there at all and have a poke around under the microscope there was nothing uh, obvious of course we've got a faulty channel 3 here and we're not sure if it's in the hybrid or whether or not it's in the ADC or whether or not it's in uh, part of the sample memory or uh, something like that but uh, I asked for comments on the forum and sure enough I got them and it turns out somebody had uh, well Vincent actually uh, free electron on the forum um, had the info that the hybrid amplifier uh, chip in here actually has a high frequency and a low frequency uh, differential driver output so it splits the signal into high frequency and low frequency component and there's two line uh, differential pairs which go over to the ADC there so um, and that might kind of explain it because it looked like the low frequency content worked but the high frequency content didn't so possibly there could be something there so I'll have another look at the that under the uh, microscope to see what's going on there a few people ask well what's the next step of course well the next step are I'll try and find some uh, power supply rails that are common between these things because we've got different channels um, then it's good because we've got something to compare it with so maybe I'll try and find some power rails in there measure those make sure they're okay um, but as I said you know look that it's the ADC there is digitizing that low frequency components so you know I'd be a bit surprised if there was any uh, issue with the uh, power supply there maybe but hey you never know and uh, so we'll check that out uh, we'll also probe the next step would be to probe the differential output of the uh, channel here and because as I said we've got another channel we can compare feed the same signal into a working channel and the faulty channel here and we can check to see what the differential output there is on both that high frequency and the low frequency um, pair on there so we can actually uh, do some uh, simple measurements quick measurements and uh, check that out and that'll tell us if there's anything wrong with this hybrid at all because it'd be really nice to completely eliminate this hybrid module and you know is it in here or is it up in the more conventional circuitry up in here that'd be real nice to know so let's get to it so let's check this hybrid module again and see where these diff pairs come out as I mentioned previously, obviously these two pins here coming out of the hybrid are one of the differential pairs. We've got some capacitors there, we've got some resistors by the looks of it, uh, laser trim resistors there, and these two pins are your differential pair output. And if you can see down in there, sorry it's not going to, yeah it hasn't focused on that, but you can see the differential pair winding its way out there like that and they're nice thick traces so you know, know that's a controlled if there's a ground plane under there you know that's a controlled impedance pair running to the ADC chip over here and if you have a look at these two over here right next to it well they're also running as a differential pair down in there but thinner well that makes sense that means that this one over here with the thicker traces is probably the high frequency one would be my guess and this pair over here is the uh, low frequency pair if um, Vincent has got that right and they do split the signal out and go over to the ADC like that so there you go um, so one of the first things I, I'm probably going to do because we can get the probes down on there I might just do get the meter out multimeter and just do some resistance measurements and compare between the two modules actually this is channel 3 here that we're looking at and you can see the same we're looking at channel 2 before so these are the high frequency pins there and then you've got your two low frequency pins coming out there and going over to the ADC over there so that's definitely a differential pair so I'm going to assume I can't see sort of any other ones sort of nearby so I'm going to assume you know you would think that they would be like right next to each other on the hybrid chip chip so that's definitely the best guess so in circuit resistance measurements are actually can be quite handy if you've got like an AB uh, comparison here so le like what I want to check is the capacitors are making contact down to the hybrid down in there and the way I can do that is I can contact the top of the capacitor up there this is the good channel there you go 21.8 ohms on one 
cap. This is on presumably the, that high frequency pair. 21.8, the same. So let's go over here. Make sure they're the same. Yep. And drat. <laughs> I was hoping it'd be that easy. You know, I'd be able to find something. But no, that's um, fine on that pair there. Now I can actually test the other pair. Let's just... Uh, Put the pins across there, 0.785 meg, okay, swap them. I'm not measuring anything, low impedance there, 0.787, okay. But anyway, the actual values don't matter because you can just probe around. Ah, there you go. There you go, that's, that's slightly different. Let's measure a third channel over here. Ah, there you go. Hey, hello. Let's go over to channel 4 over here. Did I get the right pins on channel 3? Hang on, hang on. Oh, no, there we go. Okay, so channel 4 is... No, alright. No, that's a bit of a furphy. Okay, no, we're chasing a red herring there. Right, now I'm feeding in a 1 kilohertz, uh, 1 volt peak to peak sine wave into both channels and you can see channel 3 there that high frequency content is just awful the uh, blue one there is channel 2 so that's working just fine and as I said the amplitude is just fine and the low frequency waveform performance of channel 3 there is just fine it's just got all this high frequency crap on it so you know that's that's really interesting in what Vincent said with those separate pairs with the high frequency and the low frequency content so anyway let's have a probe around now of course when you're working on stuff like this you have to be very careful I've got the main section uh, completely you know separate over there like that which is really good uh, the low voltage uh, cabling comes over quite nicely to the main board and so I can actually uh, probe around this while I'm still feeding in the signals to the front panel here so access is actually really quite good but anyway just want to keep away from that uh, main stuff over there and also there's the high frequency uh, backlight uh, high voltage backlight inverter here as well and it's got a little caution on there want to stay around with that now to probe this uh, what we can do we can just use a single uh, probe and do it uh, single ended um, that's just going to uh, work fine for this uh, differential signal probe each side independently but we'll use uh, two probes and we'll uh, do a poor man's uh, differential probe so we'll, we'll subtract one signal from the other but in this case it's it's you know it's probably not going to make a huge difference I'm going to connect the uh, grounds through to the common uh, ground on here otherwise we're going to pick up uh, too much noise I'll probably uh, show you the effects of that in a minute and um, yeah we've got uh, both channels 1 and channel 2 set up the math operation is channel A minus channel B so let's have a probe of this thing and see what we get right I'm going to have a look at channel 2 which is the good channel and I'm looking at the high frequency output and bingo that's the differential pair there and you can see, clearly see, the two uh, signals, the uh, blue one and the yellow one there, and the purple one is the math. This um, Rigol scope isn't the fastest on this uh, math operation. It's nothing like a real good analog scope with its uh, subtraction mode, that's for sure. Um, it's a bit slow as a wet week, really, on that math function. But anyway, we can see our one kilohertz, and you can see that the signal... Sorry, I can't push the uh, stop button and capture that um, using both hands here. But um, yeah, we're getting our one kilohertz signal and we can see the differential signal there, which isn't really helping us a huge amount. Now, as I said, let's disconnect these ground wires here. In fact, we'll uh, take them off like that. And let's probe that again. And uh, here we go. And you'll see... Air out, look at that, noisy as, that is an awful waveform. So you really need to connect your grounds in there to uh, uh, get your um, noise down on that. And there we go, I've run some uh, averaging on that and you can see it's bang on 1 kilohertz, I'm getting nice beautiful waveforms out of the high frequency uh, part of channel 2 there. So that's our good channel.
All right, now let's take a look at channel two here. I've got averaging on, so that's what uh, it cleans up the waveform, but uh, doesn't allow us really to do proper real-time probing. But there's the low frequency output, and that is just fine. Let me uh, switch that averaging uh, off there. That's a bit annoying. Okay, so this is channel two, what we'll call the low frequency output. Okay, fine. And this is channel two what we'll call the high frequency output and that's just fine as well we're getting the same signal on both of those differential pairs now let's go over to the faulty channel this is the low frequency pin that's just fine there's our one kilohertz signal not a problem at all and there's our high frequency pin not a problem at all so bingo we've just narrowed it down to something being wrong outside of this hybrid module it is not that hybrid module there at all at least not in this instance for this test signal and really it should be the same case for every uh, you know every test signal really there's nothing wrong with that hybrid module at all we can completely eliminate that I was gonna suggest you know if that was an issue the next step in there might be to you know get the freezer can in there or something on that uh, chip and freeze it down see if you know there's a thermal um, you know, a uh, like a, a joint issue or something like that, a bond, like a, you know, what is that, like a little BGA device or something um, soldered down to that uh, ceramic hybrid module or something like that. Could be a bad joint under there, something like that, which would ordinarily show up with um, some thermal cycling. So you might get the freezer spray on there or something like that. So, but anyway, we don't have to do that because it is not an issue in there we're getting exactly the same this is the advantage of having a working channel side by side you can just probe both and we know it's not that hybrid module so it's something in here so next thing is the touch test yo that's pretty hot that's pretty hot too and so all of those ADCs are getting pretty darn hot in fact I might get the thermal camera out for this. I've got my new FLIR infrared camera, which I haven't showed yet. Oh. And whoa, check this out. This is the new FLIR E-Series. This is the E8. This is the top of the range E8. So thank you very much, FLIR, for sending this in. It's going to be a permanent fixture here in the lab. They've uh, donated this to the lab here so that we can use it for specifically stuff like this and um yeah i will be doing a full review of it in the uh well it is a new year now isn't it but yeah go figure now i can actually capture video from this fleur camera via the usb port but uh please forgive me i couldn't be bothered uh dragging the notebook over and uh you know hooking it up and and doing uh that sort of stuff so you'll have to be content with just viewing the screen here unfortunately but um yeah it still gives us a very good result here and you can see the span we're going from 22 degrees sort of you know on the bench uh, this is the temperature scale it's automatically adjusted this up to 96 so you can see that the hottest objects which are obviously that main chip the die inside that main chip there we go 101 well you know 90 it's basically 100 degrees there on that uh, main ASIC chip here comes my finger there it is that main ASIC chip down there, and you can see that the eight, the four ADCs, one there, one there, one there, and there, and you can see the hybrid um, chips up there, those hybrid ASICs, and which is uh, you know a differential uh, amplifier and stuff, and then there's that mysterious um, sort of you know fourth, uh, fifth uh, bridging chip in there. That one's also pretty darn hot, running at 90 degrees. Anyway, the ADCs there. Are running at about 80 but the thing I wanted to check is that they're all running at about the same temperature and you can pretty much see that there in the color gradient I mean I'm not going to dick around with getting the exact you know pointer on that and the interesting thing about this watch this is if, if I go closer you'll notice that the hotspot offsets won't will be off on the chip because this is the parallax error due to the inbuilt camera and also, please forgive me, I don't have a uh, tripod for this thing either. Now, I've got my pointer in here, and you can see that it's, it, this is a really awesome camera because it has this um, MSX technology which overlays a real image of the board like that 
over the thermal image and it's really the resolution is really fantastic I can read serial numbers of chips and everything but anyway you can see as it gets close here there's parallax over you can see that the closer I get I'm moving the camera towards the thing then see that hot spot there that my point is pointing at should be in the center of that chip but it's not so that's the parallax error due to the camera and the thermal sensor because Ta-da! The camera is up here and the thermal sensor is down in here. So there's a, you know, you're going to get a parallax error and there is a software option in here to actually um, set that when you're up close. And you can see that we're already at our closest alignment distance there of 0.3. So, yeah, anyway, um, this, is, this is a really neat camera and uh, I will have to do a full review of this. But you can change the image mode. The user interface is a bit annoying. See, here's the difference between the MSX mode, which overlays the camera. Look, you can read all the serial numbers on there. It's just beautiful, and as opposed to just normal thermal image mode like that, which is, you know, pretty boring, even though this thing has 320 by uh, 200 resolution on the damn thing. So the resolution on the thermal is awesome. Or you can just do picture in picture like that, and or you can take uh, digital photos and things like that. Anyway... Um, yeah, this is not a review. I'm just playing around, but as you can see there, the uh, as we get further away, that hot spot will line up properly with the center of the chip. There we go. It's getting much closer, so you can see that they're lined up in there. But anyway, um, <laughs> enough mucking around with my new toy here. Um, that tells me that you know that ADC chip there isn't on channel three isn't um, you know faulty or anything like that it's not heating up so no real thermal issues there that's interesting input termination overheat message hmm. maybe because uh, yeah the fan is not on and we're getting no cooling in this thing whoops all right so what I've started to do here is just have a probe around at some of the voltages I won't uh, show that up close you've seen in the previous video but there's a couple of like SOC 23s under there and I've been probing around at those SOT23s between the channels, and I found something rather interesting. There's a three pin, hang on, let's oh, I put my probe on there on the shield for ground, and I probe all three, ah, geez, that's hot. Damn it. Probe all three pins of this SOT23, and there's minus 2.576, minus 2.576, and. 2.576 so we've got 2.576 on all three pins of that SOT23 down in there whatever that device does it's got the same voltage on all the pins and I've checked the other SOT23s on the other channel here and they've got various voltages on them one is 2.5 minus 2.576 but other ones have got you know 3.3 and other voltages on there so that is rather interesting. So what I'll do is I'll um, turn the power off and I'll measure the resistance of that and uh, see if things are shorted. Um, just be careful when you're probing around here, by the way, because I was using, uh, as I said before, this is ground, this uh, metal shield around here. So if you're accidentally probing and accidentally touch things, you can short stuff out. But the power's off at the moment because I'm measuring resistance. And uh, these two pins on that SOT23, look at that completely shorted huh, I don't measure that on that same presumably the same SOT23 I'm going to assume that all four channels are identical there's like a different layout in terms of where they're placed on each channel on the board but there seems to be you know the same sort of components on each channel so the the two pins on that SOT23 the third one over here is not really anything there's like you know a K between there or something like that but if I go over to one of the channels over here for example this one and measure that SOT23 uh, that SOT23 the pins there you go it's like 55k and I can do that on these other channels over here and look there it is 54k and I think the well, it's for completeness. Let's measure this channel over uh, channel one over here. Oh, 2.5k. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, still, right? It's not a dead short. 
So whatever that little beastie there is, the bloody thing, I think, is shorted out. And that could certainly explain what's happening here. I'll try the thermal camera again and try and get a close-up of that uh, little SOT23. No, I can't really see anything obvious. It'd be like up under there. It's like there, but on the uh, thermal imaging camera, it'd be, you know, it'd show up as a, as a hot spot if there was significant current flowing through there. But that sucker is is short i i really suspected i mean you know i could be wrong right but you know it just it just doesn't doesn't feel right uh -huh. there's the little culprit that i suspect and under the mantis microscope because it's got uh, better optics and you know and the 3d effect it looks like there is a split in the top of the case on that little tiny split i'm not sure how this is going to show up in hd on my camcorder camera here um it's not showing up i'm viewing this through my macro lens on the camcorder i was hoping that it would uh do it but no i'm at full zoom here and that's the best i can get let's see if i can film this under the mantis and there we go you can see the top of that so this is really hard to get in focus but look Look at that, just on the seven there, there is a, looks like a big split right in the center of that SOT23 that for all the world looks like a blowout hole. That, I think the magic smoke has escaped from that thing. I have no idea what it is, it's just got 27 uh, marked on it, but uh, those two pins on the uh, left there, of course, are shorted. And the other devices, which are also marked uh, 27 in the circuit, those ones aren't a dead short. So, magic smoke every time. The active ingredient in every component. If it escapes, they don't work anymore. I completely forgot that I had these real sexy, tiny Pomona uh, test leads someone sent into the mailbag. These are perfect for really tight quarters probing on boards like this. I'm going to get back in there with these. Oh, I just love them. They're so look at needle point sharp. Oh, beautiful. So I'm back probing around on here, and yeah, the other SOT23s on the other channels, they're measuring uh, plus 3.3 volt. Uh, presumably 3.3 volt rail and then uh, plus 2.5 volts but the blown SOC 23 in here is measuring minus 2.5 volts on its pin so yeah that is just that is rather curious see there's 3.3 on one of the pins of uh, one of the SOC 23s one of the good ones and there's you know 2.44 and 2.457 whereas our faulty one with the magic smoke that's escaped presumably minus 2.57 and minus 2.5 and well minus 2.5 on all the pins so yep something ain't right so it's marked uh, 27 on the top of it and these bloody cryptic SOT23 things I don't do you know I'm not in the repair trade if you're doing this all the time you might sort of you know have an inkling what uh, that could be is it a little uh, three pin SOT23 uh, voltage regulator I don't know could be because the others have a uh, 3.3 volt input and then um, two and a half output so it could certainly be a 2.5 volt regulator that doesn't explain why there's not 3.3 volts on one pin of that thing though so I don't know is it like a, a dual diode or something like that but it is labeled it looks like CP but uh, I think it might be CR because the others are CR it's labeled CR 140 on the um, silk screen there now of course uh, CR is a um, standard designator it means diode so possibly it's some sort of uh, diet you know it could be like a dual diode or a, or a single diode or something like that like a BAV 99 or um, something equivalent like that no I checked and it's definitely CP 140 it doesn't look like the R has been uh, chopped off at like the you know uh, the little uh, leg of the R has been chopped off by one of the uh, vias there but considering that an identical one on another channel is labeled CR which indicates a diode it has the same marking on the top 27 well yeah my best guess is that's a diode of some sort Oh, silly me, I just realised that the two uh, left-hand pins there on that SOT23 are actually uh, shorted on the PCB, so that's not inside the package. But anyway, um, that 
it is definitely, I reckon there's a blowhole in the top of that sucker. And yeah, I really suspect in something's wrong there. And a bit of googling, and I tracked it down to uh, possibly a Fairchild MM uh, BD 1204 because it shows 24 there, but 27 is used for the 1204, which is a ra pin arrangement. Uh, well, the 1204 pin arrangement, which is the common cathode small signal diode, just as I suspected. Bingo, that's got to be it. Now, I should probably also double check the signals going to the ADC down here to make sure those differential signals are getting from that hybrid down to there as well. I mean, this diet, I, I reckon that diode is gone. I mean, I reckon, you know, it's blowing the ass out of that diode, but, you know, usually they might only be in there for protection or something like that. So, you know, why it's blowing, well, let's ignore that for the minute. But the fact is, you know, that may not affect or continue, you know, affect its current operation. There could be something else um, causing the issue. But anyway, I probably should double check, power it up again, feed in the signals, and just double check that the signals are going there. But I'll have to use, um, you know, something like these uh, probes because the regular um, scope probes, I just can't get in there in that tiny pin pitch, especially right next to that uh, shield there and probe those pins. It's really quite annoying. Anyway, that diode there, is it a diode? There we go. But, let's check it the other direction. And, yeah, it's exactly the same, so, eh, it's in circuit. What do you do? Actually, instead of probing those, it really, you know, because there's nothing going to be wrong with the PCB traces from there to, you know, the one centimetre it takes to get from the hybrid module to the ADC. So, you know, if there was anything wrong, it'd be the solder joints on the chip. So I just reflowed those. So I just used, I uh, just dabbed my flux pen on there and just, you know, got down there and just reflowed the joints down in there. And, well, let's power it back up, see if it made a difference. I doubt it, but hey, it's worth a shot. And, of course, no, I'm never that lucky bummer and well i went the whole hog and i uh lifted that one pin on that uh faulty diode there and nah makes no difference whatsoever so ah oh, goodness let's have a look at that diode there that i've i've lifted the pin up on so we can actually access the pin there we go it's still acting as a diode there we go 0.55 Sounds a bit right. Haven't checked the data sheet, but that does sound right. Other direction. Oh, hello. Hello. I'm making correct contact there. Yes, I am. There you go. Ooh. Yeah, that thing is... Yep, that's, there's something wrong with that diode. Yeah, that doesn't work well at all. What I'm going to do now is just apply power to the bare board here so I can access the backside because uh, we shouldn't need any of the uh you know the screen and keyboard and stuff uh hooked up for this sort of thing so i can access possibly some uh you know uh, power stuff on the bottom i mean you know we've got lots of bypass caps here i'd like to test uh the voltage rails here's the third channel you know one two three four uh there's some ferrite uh beads in there for those channels i've already tested those those are uh fine they're not open or anything like that i'm not sure if like you know, there's one of those per channel or something like that. But anyway, all the bypass caps there are on the bottom. I can maybe check some uh, supply rails for that uh, third channel there. So because, you know, like there's nothing on the top and there's no uh, test points. You know, it'd be nice if there was, you know, here's a 2.5 volt rail. Here's the 3.3 volt rail. Please test it. But no. Nah. So the good thing about these extra channels again, as you can see, is that uh, I'll put my probe on the ground over here and I can probe these caps and you can see we've got minus 2.5 volts there on that cap sorry you can't see it and then plus 2.5 volts on that channel so it looks like the ADC is operating plus minus 2.5 or at least on those caps um, so there's some rail and look this is the faulty channel this is channel 3 minus 2.5 Plus 2.5, they're all probably running from the same regulator. I don't know if they have local regulation or not. They could do. That's what one of those little SOT 23s. Minus 2, uh, plus 2.5, minus 2.5. So, and all the other channels. There you go. They're doing exactly the same thing. And the layout 
is duplicated across the channels. The PCB layout designer, of course, is not going to make their life hard, so they're going to duplicate the layout on all of them. So, you know, you can easily compare channels. So this is our folded channel 3, and those two caps there are just hunky-dory. In the 3.3 volt rail on the main processor over here, powering all the, uh, you know, the heavy-duty digital stuff, that's all just fine as well. I can't find any other voltages on these ADC channels. It looks like it's just operating from plus minus 2.5 volts. So, yeah, all the, the voltage rails are fine. I don't know. I, I'm starting to give up again. And one thing left to try is the old freezer spray. I don't have any freezer spray at the moment. I'm going to use the air, air duster. Just turn it upside down. Instant freezer spray. Brilliant. So I'm going to spray that uh, third channel ADC. And... Uh, Anything? I can't watch and spray at the same time. No. Let's try that center chip. No. Memory. No. No. No, big ASIC chip. Nothing, not a sausage. No, hybrid. Just in case. No, hybrid's fine. Let's really go to town on that. Oh, there we go. Look, we've got an offset. Hello. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Look at that. Look at that. Wow, it drifted back. I mean, you'd expect that, but it's not like it suddenly vanished or anything. Let's see if I can isolate that. No. Right. I'm just doing the little chips surrounding it. And well let, let's see if I can get an offset on channel two, the blue one. Oh yeah, look. <laughs> look, look. Look at that. Look at that. It's coming back. Oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. <laughs> That's fantastic. Look at channel two. It really, it, what, it hasn't recovered. It hasn't recovered. It's giving channel two another spray. Look at that. Woohoo! And so, yeah, it's not surprising that, of course, channel three. But we didn't see channel two do an offset. Channel three is giving us an offset. So that's interesting. Um, there we go. Anyway, that's I you know I would expect that. It's not like it's changing the high frequency uh, performance on there at all. So yeah, I don't know. That's fun, but yeah, we haven't found anything. So sorry, I think I'm going to call it uh, quits for today on this one. Again, I've already spent an hour or uh, something on it, and well, you know, I've got some other things to do. And, well, I think we've got some progress. I'm pretty sure I found a faulty diode in there, but, well, it's not affecting the channel at all. I remove it from the circuit. The channel still does the business. I've reflowed the uh, joints on that channel 3 there. I've checked the voltage rails. We've verified the signals coming out of the uh, hybrid there. So we're you know, pretty confident it's not the hybrid module at fault and well i don't know is it one of the memories or something but look there's it's not like there's a memory per channel so they're clearly like um sharing those between the uh channels and of course the adc's are nine bits each so that's an oddball uh value so you know you probably got to share the memories anyway but i like i, I don't know Oh, once again, I'll, you know, open the comments, see if anyone's got any better ideas. But anyway, I hope you found that interesting, um, that little uh, troubleshooting procedure to at least, I think, find a faulty diode. That's at least progress. Something's magic smokes escaped from that, so that's not bad. But unfortunately, Murphy has conspired to ensure that we don't find the fault yet again. The EV blog repair curse strikes again. This one will have to go on the work in progress list. Catch you next time.